Hey guys, this is a 2024 Toyota Supra, which means it's 45 years out from the launch of this model name. This is the 45th anniversary special edition, which is why it has the rear wing and the Supra decal. I think it looks quite nice. I have the amazing opportunity of living with this car for an entire week, so I'm going to take you along my week and show you what it is like to live with this Toyota Supra. A couple things about this particular model. One, it's the 3 liter inline 6 cylinder making 382 horsepower. Very nice. And two, this is the manual Toyota Supra, also very nice, which was launched for the 2023 model year last year. So this is like the best version of the Supra you can get. Oh my goodness. I did legs today. Second day with the Toyota Supra, and the first thing I am going to go do is get bagels, so let's head out. <laughs> Shout out to Hank's Bagels in Sherman Oaks. That was probably the best bagel I've ever had. Um, now it's time to head home. All right, just finished some filming with the Supra, and now I'm going to head up to Ojai, which is about 50 miles away from where I am now, to do some canyon driving with a guy you might be familiar with. All right, hey Eddie, Hello. how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. We've got fantastic weather, amazing roads, amazing yes. scenery. Yes, where are we? Where are we? Um, California. Where? Somewhere in California. Somewhere, somewhere in Southern California, yeah. past Ojai. Yeah, and what is that you're driving? We can kind of see. Maserati MC20 Cielo. And which means sky in Italian, because nice. I am very Italian. I'm right, right, kid. yeah, I can yeah. see, I can see. <laughs> what do you think of it? It is absolutely drop dead gorgeous. I just find myself stopping and staring at the car. The paint yeah. is unbelievable. This is like the special launch paint for the convertible. Yeah. It is quick. It is definitely quick. Uh, that twin turbo V stick is V six is very boosty. Yeah. Um, drives very nicely. Yeah. It's just, it's pricey. This one. Did I tell you how much this one costs? You said like three forty. It's option to three. It's got over fifty thousand dollars in carbon fiber like oh my God. this 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 rear lip is fifty five hundred all the exterior fascia down here in the side skirts is 39 grand and it's got seven grand in interior carbon so that's almost as much as the car i'm driving that's just yeah that is probably a super in carbon fiber yeah yeah, yeah. this is 265 base carbon ceramics are 10 grand right so the options on this maserati would buy you an entire Supra. Yeah, well, this one's actually 64. Oh, yeah, but easily. Yeah. Easily, yeah. yeah. You, you, this has a, a Supra worth of options on it. That's crazy. But, dude, show, show, show everybody the paint. Look at that pearl flake. Like, it is every angle, the lighting, whether it's, like, uh, indoor lighting, outdoor lighting, like, and the sun hits it, it is beautiful. Absolutely love it. It's also filthy because I've been driving it in the rain. Yeah, when I saw you guys, when you guys were driving off into the distance, it honestly looks like a Ferrari at a distance. Yeah. Like, it looks like an F8. Yes. Like, I'm like, that is a Ferrari. But, and I guess it makes sense. They share some heritage. Yeah, they do. But this engine is purely bespoke to Maserati. Because right. it's a 90 degree V6. It is, everybody used to, I, a lot of people were like saying it's the same as a 296. No, 296 is 120 degree. And right. it feels like a baby V12, a totally different personality. This thing completely de uh, developed by Maserati. It was in the, um, you had the Gran Turismo, right? Yes, yes. yes. So it was a detuned de version yeah, of that. Because it's going to power all their internal combustion engine cars, right? I think so. Just yeah. in various forms of. Whatever. Right, right. I wonder if they do like a super track version. That'd be cool. Yeah. Like even more hard. Look at Ford's carbon on the doors, too. And doors that go up are just better. Cello. Cello. Oh, yes. Doors, doors that, that go like this. Are just, yes, it is just more fun. It adds to the whole drama. Except they have no storage on the door panels. Yeah, like that's a bummer. Like, the parents have like a little opening compartment. Oh, really? Thing. Yeah. Because obviously you just have an open thing. It would just yeah. fall out. Everything would you'd lose it. Well, if you guys want to see more of this car, I will be driving it in about a month. I've got it for five days, so very much looking forward to that because it is, as you can see, a beautiful car. And it will be my first supercar that I'll there really spend go. any time with. Actually, I think this is the most expensive press car I've had, too. Probably I, for yeah, me, too. I yeah, mean, for sure. I haven't had Lambos or whatever. Right. It's been the most expensive press car. Oh, so beautiful. The weird thing with this is, like, it's a supercar for sure, but if you want to, like, daily drive it as a supercar, it is so utterly impractical. Check out the front trunk. It, like, is so hilariously tiny. If I can find that. There we go. Oh, my God. Like... This little, it, it's, it's, it's you can fit a laptop. You could fit in a laptop in one iPad and it's full. Like you could not put a backpack in there. It oh. is bigger than the frunk on the Hyundai Ionic 5 or Ionic 6. Oh, that is just, yeah, the little tiny like. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah, it just has a little lid. But, but yeah, no, you couldn't fit a bag really. Why bother? 
So that's the hard thing, right? You and that's buy, the only storage? There's no there rear storage? There is a trunk back there okay, that's okay. small convertible top, but right. if you buy a, a McLaren 570S or whatever, that, a 600 LT, you buy an F8, like Huracan, way bigger front trunk. Or the Corvette. I just had the Corvette and yeah. I could almost like, I could like sit down into it. Like it was, it was, it was big. Yeah, yeah. Like my Z06 would be way more practical. So. Right. But then you just walk away and look at it. You're like, oh, it's so pretty. Absolutely. Yeah. Eddie's up ahead in the MC20 and I can kind of keep pace in this super manual with the 382 horsepower straight six. Obviously, I don't think Eddie is going as hard as he can because before I was being absolutely dropped by that MC20, but we're still going a healthy speed and this Supra is really fast. It is so impressive what this car can do. I just love driving it. Sport mode also definitely helps with the dynamics of this car. It makes the steering a bit heavier and it also gives you such a great exhaust note so you really can tell when you need to shift and what the engine is feeling. Yeah, I'm just so impressed by, again, how powerful this car is. It is a genuinely quick vehicle because it isn't that heavy. So of course, even though it only has only 382 horsepower, it's still gonna feel really powerful. There are a few sections of this canyon road that we are on that are one lane, so we do have to wait at lights for a little bit, and there is a little traffic and some traffic that you really don't want to pass, which is a little bit of a bummer, but God, look at how beautiful it is. We are on Highway 33, which is just north of Ojai, and if you guys are ever in this region of California, it's kind of by Ventura, Santa Barbara, definitely come on Highway 33. This road is so spectacular to drive on and absolutely Drop dead gorgeous. Just like that Maserati MC20 cello. But this super manual isn't that bad either. I'm having so much fun with this car. It is so much fun to drive on a canyon road. So dynamic, so engaging. And it just, it feels very at home here. It's not quite as tight as the Corvette Stingray was that I was driving last week in track mode, but it is still, you can push this car and it go way faster than any car should be able to go. Day three with the Toyota Supra, I'm about to film with a really cool car, and while I'm waiting, I've discovered an interesting problem with the Supra. To access the trunk, you can press a button on the key fob, or you can press this button right here. But if you slam the driver's door too hard, the trunk will slightly relatch, and then you can't pull it up, so you have to walk around again, press the button again, don't close the driver's door, because it might make this relatch, and then you can pull the trunk open. A surprising flaw in this car's German engineering, although since the Supra is the only coupe version of this car, the Z4 is only available as a convertible, maybe this part was engineered by Toyota, but still I'm surprised that either of those companies would have a problem such as that. Just a little annoying. Day four with the Toyota Supra and I just need to run to the grocery store, so let's get going. Those new locking shelves at Target are so dumb. I don't see how they prevent any theft and they just make the shopping experience really annoying. All right, now I'm going to go meet back up with Eddie. Uh, there's an awesome opportunity to check out the new Infinity QX80 over in Hollywood, so let's head out. Driving the Toyota Supra in an urban setting is a breeze. This car is pretty small, so it's nice and zippy. You can easily fit through gaps in traffic and make the most of the 382 horsepower in that way. But it is also just super comfortable. These seats are really comfortable. Um, the suspension is also really soft, especially in normal mode. It is really compliant, pretty supple. You don't really get any harsh impacts into the car, especially at low speeds. I've noticed that's really uh, uh, a strength of this suspension is at low speeds because a lot of times 
it's harder to dampen a, a bump when you're going slower because there is no momentum of the car laterally. Uh, but the Supra does a really good job with that. It's also a pretty light car, so that probably helps. It's also got automatic engine stop start, which is defeatable if you want, but that can help improve fuel economy. In terms of this six speed manual transmission, it's not the smoothest I have driven. About a month and a half ago, I spent time with a 2024 Ford Mustang GT with a six speed manual. And that transmission was buttery smooth, so easy and just simple to change gears. It really, like, if you want to learn how to drive a manual, I feel like that car would be a great car to do it. it. That was like the easiest manual transmission I've ever driven. This one, you just have to be a little more intentional with your gear changes, a little more intentional with uh, releasing the clutch. You have to be a little more engaged uh, to drive this manual transmission and to drive it smoothly. Makes sense. This is a uh, very sporty car. Uh, it does have automatic rev matching that is defeatable if you want to turn that off, but I enjoy that. It's fun to just brum brum on the downshifts. Uh, yeah, so not the easiest transmission, but also it's not the hardest. Something like the Lotus Amira definitely had a heavier manual transmission. The throw of it and uh, finding every gear was definitely a lot more, <clears throat> it, 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 you needed to be a lot more engaged to drive that vehicle smoothly than the Supra, but uh, it's still, it's not that bad. And once you get used to it, it's pretty simple. Had a great time looking at the new Infiniti QX80. It's a pretty cool car. My content on that will already be up before I post this video because it's also under embargo, so I can't share that with you now anyways. But, like right now, presently, but now I have to drive home. Just grabbed a little late lunch with Eddie and now I have to drive home and it's like 40 minutes. Ugh, living in LA, the joys. Today is my final full day with the Toyota Supra. I can't believe how fast this week has gone by. It's about 7.30 in the morning and I am heading to Orange County to attend the reveal of the new Rivian R2, which I'm really excited to see. So let's head out. to more people and one of the things for us one of the key things for us with with r2 is that and not just r2 but our well that was a great little event from rivian we had not one but two surprise cars the r3 and r3x those cars do look absolutely great the r2 won't come out till 2026 so the r3 probably won't come out till after that it'll be a while before we get a chance to drive it but they look great hopefully they mean rivian will stay afloat because i do really like that company but now it's time to head back to la Got a little over an hour drive left, and then I need to film a conclusion for this Supra because it is the last day with the Supra. My week with the 2024 Toyota Supra is at an end. It is getting picked up in a couple of hours, but what a week it was. I went up to Ojai to drive some canyons with Eddie and his MC20. I went over to Hollywood to check out the new Infiniti QX80, also with Eddie. And I went down to Laguna Beach to attend the reveal of the Rivian R2 and R3 and R3X. And throughout it all, this Supra was so much fun, so comfortable, and so easy to just get in and drive. But I also learned a couple things while living with this car for a couple of weeks. First, if you get the manual Supra, you forego adaptive cruise control, which is a feature I love. In all of my driving, I didn't have adaptive cruise control. It does have normal cruise control. And if you get the automatic Supra, it does have adaptive cruise control. I've also been in manual cars that do have adaptive cruise control, so it is a possibility. So I'm a bit disappointed that this car doesn't have that feature because it makes highway driving so much easier especially if you're in a place like Southern California where the highways are perpetually congested. It just makes road tripping so much easier. Second, this car doesn't have wired CarPlay. It only has wireless CarPlay. I'm more of a wired CarPlay guy myself. 
because my phone dropped Bluetooth with this vehicle two times in the one week I was driving this car. So I had to forget my device and repair and it's just really annoying. And it's not something I wanna have to deal with. I like wired CarPlay because I plug it in and it pretty much works every single time unless you're in a Ford because Ford's CarPlay for some reason is not very good. But other than that, I loved every second of living with the Toyota Supra. It is so engaging and so easy to live with. It is quite simply one of my favorite cars on the road today. Thanks for watching, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.